Let's take a look at the Florida Gators quarterback battle after spring football. We've talked a lot about this leading into the spring game and what Graham Mertz could be and Jack Miller. I just think we need to take a evaluation now that we have seen them in a spring football game because you and I both know didn't look great. Okay, didn't look as as exciting as maybe you wanted it to be as a Gator fan. But I still think there's a lot of interesting things to take away from this battle right now. And I think the first thing we got to talk about, it's a very real battle. Like Billy Napier talked after a spring scrimmage about the, the quarterback battle that was going on. And I think for some Gator fans, there was this feeling of like, really? Really? We had Jack Miller competing with Graham Mertz, the guy who we brought in from Wisconsin, who was so highly tatted out of high school. And Jack Miller, like Coach Napier, we trust you, but like, My man didn't look great in the Oregon State game. He didn't look great in that first spring game we saw him in. Are you sure there's a quarterback battle going on? And if there is a quarterback battle going on, what does that mean for Graham Mertz? That second part of it we'll talk about in a second. But to be real, this quarterback battle is 1,000% legitimate. And I came away from that spring football game saying, you know what, if I had to pick somebody today, I think Jack Miller gives you a really good chance to win football games because of what he does with his legs. And I think that's the next thing we got to look at. What, what does this offense require of these guys? Because Graham Mertz, when he had time in that spring football game, when he had a clean pocket, he was able to drop back, set his feet, go from one progression to two progression. He was accurate. He was on time. There was good ball placement. Like He was someone that looked like a guy who could be your starting quarterback. Now, the enormous caveat to that is there was not a ton of times where the Florida quarterback was dropping back and had a clean pocket. It was a lot of messy drops. It was a lot of get to your third step and you better get out of town because you're going to have trouble coming in from the defensive line. And some of that's credit to the Florida defensive line. Some of that is Austin Armstrong dialing it up during the spring game. A little bit of a zig they zag approach to spring games defensively, but I love to see it. That's good TV. I'm curious if the offensive line will allow Graham Mertz to just purely play quarterback and not have to play ad-lib, Johnny football kind of deal. Because if that's what you need, Jack Miller looked substantially more adept at getting out of the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, and making a play. I mean, we saw it on his touchdown pass. He breaks contain, defensive line's chasing him, finds someone in the back of the end zone. His speed, his elusiveness, I think that could ultimately kind of be the, the wild card for him in this entire quarterback race. And so Jack Miller... If you don't have the offensive line play, if if that's not something where he's able to, Graham Mertz, if he's able to drop back, I would would side with Jack Miller. I would side with Jack Miller for the reasons that I just said. So the offensive line, I think, in large part, could very easily dictate who ends up being your starting quarterback by nature of the kind of game you're able to play. And I also want to make this clear. Whoever plays starting quarterback for Florida, I don't think they need to be a lot more than a game manager. And that's not a dunk on Graham Mertz, not a dunk on Jack Miller. Game manager has kind of become like a bad word to say about quarterbacks for whatever reason. You don't need to have the highlight play, the 80-yard touchdown pass. I just need you to be able to make the check down on third and three. I need you to get us in a good play, and I need you to make your layups, meaning when we have somebody open, you hit them. It's not it's not an inconsistency thing. Because Anthony Richardson, y'all that have followed this channel, you Gator faithful, we appreciate you for that. Make sure you're subscribed right here. Thank you in advance for that. As I was saying, the the Gator fans that have watched this show, you know how I feel about Anthony Richardson. Enormously talented. Won you several football games last year. There were times where AR is playing out of 10. There's times where he's playing out of three. For Florida, for all the close games that you ended up losing last year, what would happen if you had a quarterback that was just playing at a level seven every single game out of 10? Like not playing amazing. He's not throwing five touchdowns a game, but hey, he's good for one, two touchdowns. He's going to throw right around 60% completion percentage. I would imagine that wins you more football games if you have the same sort of outfit that you had last year. Now, the good news is I think you have improved defensive play, so that probably changes the game as a whole. But when we look at this whole thing, you don't need a superstar game breaker at quarterback, in my humble opinion. And that goes hand in hand with Jack Miller's legs, I believe. Like if he scrambles and gets us four yards instead of taking a sack, like... Cool, we're good with that, man. Again, you hope that's not the case on the offensive line. I understand there's a lot of optimism with the depth, and if you get Micah Mazuka back and all that, 
I'm with it. But I just think we need to make sure we pay attention to how that spring game went and who handled the leaky pocket. Now, I put a question out on my Twitter page, at J.D. Paquel, and just said, Florida Gator fans, do you believe that your starting quarterback is currently on the roster? We got somewhere in the range of like 265 votes. 75% of y'all said no, implying, not implying because this is one of the options, that you would like to see Florida go to the transfer portal to get another quarterback to start for you in 2023. Wow. I wasn't surprised that the transfer portal option won. I was a little more surprised by the landslide of votes. 75% of y'all said they want to go to the portal. Cool, I'm with it. Let's do it. Let's go to the portal then. But my question would be, are you wanting to go to the portal because you like who's currently in there? We're recording this on a Friday. Ben Bryant, I believe, is is the best quarterback available in the portal. Or is there the thought that, hey, we, we can get some sort of game breaker in there. We can get somebody who's going to be more talented than whatever we have on this roster. There's going to be somebody that eventually jumps in there that we can get that is just going to be the 10 out of 10 for us. Listen, I I like Ben Bryant. If that's who you like, great. Malik Murphy is a guy that people are talking about. Should he go in the portal? Because he may or may not get a shot at Texas. At the time of us recording this on a Friday, he has not jumped in the portal. But what I'm trying to say is one in the hand sometimes is worth more than two in the bush. Like there may not be the answer in the transfer portal. And if there's not the answer in the transfer portal, if you don't have a guy that's going to be your QB1, I think that's more than okay. I really do. I think if it's Jack Miller or Graham Mertz, Billy Napier is betting his job on that individual, and we'll ride with you. Okay, that, that's our guy. Let's go. Let's go win some football games. Let's not overthink this. You brought Graham Mertz in for a reason, and Jack Miller stuck around for a reason. And I believe they had probably honest conversations with both those guys about the nature of this quarterback duel. So with that being said, I think you can win with both those guys for the reasons I just mentioned. You don't need to go and get Peyton Manning out of the portal. That'd be nice, though, if Peyton Manning had some more eligibility. I know the Florida Gator fans feel a certain way about him when he was at Tennessee, but you know what I'm saying here. You don't have to go and get somebody just crazy out of the portal to get to where you want to go. It's only year two. You got two decent options on your roster, and a lot of their gameplay will be dependent on what's around them and the running back room succeeding and the offensive line succeeding and guys separating at the receiver position. It's bigger than just the quarterback spot. Okay, so this battle is real. Whoever wins, I think it'll be predicated on what the offense requires. We'll see what happens in the portal. We'll see who jumps in there. Make sure you're subscribed. We talk ball here every single day. We've had a ton of the Florida Gator faithful join us here recently. Thank you for that. If you haven't yet, jumped in the water. Now's the time. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram, at JD Paquel. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.